Hi boys and girls, so today's story is about Joseph. And Joseph was a person who lived a very, very, very long time ago. And you can find his story in the very first book of the Bible called Genesis. Now today, because Joseph's story is quite long and actually it covers his entire life and all the ups and the downs and the twists and the turns, all the amazing things that happened to him, we're going to go on a quick tour around Joseph's story. And to do that, I broke it up into a few bits and we're going to find a memory verse along the way. So each part of the story has a letter which will help us make up part of our memory verse. And I've sent out some letters to some people you may recognise to open up and show us what the letters are. And as we go through, those letters are going to make up part of our memory verse. So make sure you're keeping track of what the letters are as and when they come, okay? So to, first of all, to kick off our story and to introduce Joseph to us, we've got our first letter, and that is with Jason. Over to you, Jace. Thanks, Beth. Hi, boys and girls. Your next letter is B. Thanks Jason. And so our first letter is a B. So I'm going to put these letters up behind me, but you might want to keep track yourself of the letters that we're gathering up together to see what word we're going to make up at the end, okay? And the first letter, B, it stands for brothers. You see, Joseph's story starts with him being introduced with all of his brothers. Now, he didn't just have one or two, not even just three, but he had 11 brothers. Whoa, can you imagine trying to share your toys with 11 other brothers? That would be crazy, wouldn't it? It'd be so mad. And now, I suppose if you ever asked your parents, I don't know if you've ever tried this, but maybe try it today. If you've ever gone to them and asked, Mum, Dad, who is your favourite out of all of your children? Maybe if you've got brothers or sisters, you can ask them. And they would always say, oh, I couldn't possibly choose a favourite. I love you all the same. I bet they would really struggle. They wouldn't choose one person. But you see, Joseph's dad, he did have a favourite. And in fact, Joseph was his dad's favourite. And his dad wasn't quiet about it at all. He would say, oh, Joseph, I love you so much. You are my absolute favourite. You are the best son. You are the one I've been waiting for. It's so amazing. And all of his brothers, they didn't like this at all. They were so jealous. They didn't like Joseph getting all this attention. And you know, Joseph's dad even got him a special gift to show him that he was the most special out of all the brothers. And it was this lovely, colourful, expensive, special coat. And it was so colourful and he looked so smart in it and so handsome. And he went around to all his brothers saying, look at my lovely coat my dad gave me. He said it's because I'm the favourite. Look at my lovely coat. Oh, when the brothers heard this, they were furious. They couldn't believe that Joseph was getting such special treatment. And to make matters worse, Joseph had a special gift from God. You see, Joseph would sometimes dream these amazing dreams where God would speak to him about his future and what he'd do when he'd grow up. And there was a few times he had some dreams that involved his brothers. And they were that one day they were going to be in a position to bow before Joseph. That Joseph was going to be standing there and all of his brothers would be bowing down to him. And he went and he told all his brothers this. He said, well, guess what? When I'm older, you're all going to bow down to me. No way, the brothers Oh, I will never bow down to you. They were so cross with Joseph. They didn't want this boy around anymore. And so they started to hatch a plan. They were going to get rid of Joseph. Now, we need to go to our next letter to find out what happens next. So this time, I'm going over to Rachel, who's got our next letter. Right, let's find out what your next letter is. And the next letter is... Oh. Thanks, Rach. So our next letter is a U. So we're going to add this along to our memory verse here. So keep an eye how that keeps building up. But the U in the story stands for... Uh-oh. 
You see, Joseph was in trouble. His brothers had come up with a plan to get rid of him completely. See, one day, Joseph was talking to his dad and his dad said, go out into the fields and check on your brothers for me. Check that they're okay. Because they were shepherds and they were looking after the sheep. He said, go out and I'm going to send you to them. So Joseph put on his lovely coat and he set off to go and check on his brothers. And as he was coming, the brothers saw him and they all said, oh, here comes that dreamer, the one who's had the dreams about us bowing down to him. Let's get rid of him now so that that will never happen, so we never have to bow down to him. And so, as they got a bit closer, they decided to hide. They jumped out in front of him, grabbed hold of him, they gave him a punch and a kick and they threw him in a big pit that, where he would just be left and no one would find him ever again. And they decided we'll just leave him there and no one will know where he is and then we'll never have to bow down to him. Oh no, Joseph thought, get me out! This isn't a funny joke! Throw down a rope and get me out! But his brothers, they weren't listening. La 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 la, we can't hear you, we're not listening. And Joseph was stuck down in the pit. Now, when the brothers sat down to have some food near where Joseph was, just as that was happening, some traders were passing through on their way to Egypt. When the brothers had an idea, ding 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 ding, he thought, I know, if we sell Joseph, not only will we get rid of him, but we'll also get some money as well. So they sold Joseph to these traders that were going past. And as he went, they took off his robe, his special amazing coat off his dad, and they sent Joseph away, they pocketed the money. And then with the coat, they took it and they ripped it up into loads of different pieces and they killed a nearby animal. And then they covered it in all the blood to say, an animal has eaten him. And they went back to their dad and they said, you'll never guess what, something terrible has happened to Joseph. This is all that we found. And what they'd said, it was that Joseph had been eaten by a wild animal and that it was just a terrible accident that nobody could have helped. And Joseph's dad was so upset. And meanwhile, Joseph was on a journey to a place he'd never been called Egypt. And he ended up there working for a man called Potiphar. Now the next bit of our story, we're going to need our next letter. And so it's over to Tim for our next one. Are you ready, Tim? Thanks, Beth. Hello, everyone. The next letter is... It's T! Thanks, Tim. So that's our next letter. We've got a T to add on to our word here. And so far it says, but. But what? And the T stands for taken away, because Joseph was taken to a place so far away from his home. He's never been that far from home before. He'd never spoken Egyptian before. He didn't know if he was going to understand anybody. But in the Bible, it says that God was with him. And even though it was a little bit scary and a little bit frightening, and he felt all on his own, that God was with him. And that really showed because when he arrived in Egypt, he started working for a man called Potiphar. And Potiphar was so impressed with Joseph that he put him in charge of all the other slaves and all the other servants. And Joseph was doing an amazing job and God helped him in that situation. But you see, there was a uh, problem and that Potiphar had a wife who quite fancied Joseph. And every time Joseph would come into the room, she would say, Joseph, Joseph, cooey. And every time Joseph wouldn't respond and he would say, he would serve her, but he wouldn't say anything back. Until one time, she even tried to kiss him. And Joseph said, no, I can't do that. You're Potiphar's wife. I would never do that. I would never disobey him. I would never disobey God. And Potiphar's wife, she was so annoyed, she was so embarrassed, and she was so cross that she went to Potiphar and said that Joseph had tried to kiss her. And so Potiphar was absolutely furious. And he said to Joseph, Joseph, that is it. I will not have that behaviour in my house. You are going straight to jail. Oh no, and he gets taken away again, but this time to an Egyptian prison where he was left for years and years. And Joseph hadn't even done anything wrong. But 
Did you know, when he was in that prison, even though he was on his own, God was with him. And while he was there, some amazing things happened and God really helped him. So shall we find out what our next letter is and see what happened when Joseph was in jail? So it's over to you, Tammy, for the next letter. Thanks, Beth. Hi, boys and girls. The next letter is... Come on, Chicky. Get it out, get it out. G. Brilliant, thank you, Tammy. So it's our next letter. We've got a G. So we're going to add this in here. Fab. And the G in our story, it stands for gifts. If you see, God had given Joseph some really special gifts throughout his life. Can you remember earlier in the story that he had these special dreams about his brothers when he was younger? Well, also, God had given him the gift to like understand other people's dreams. And so when people were confused about what their dreams meant, they would come to him, he would ask God what they meant, and then God would show him and he could explain them to people. And this happened while he was in jail. You see, there was a butler and a baker and they'd both been having some really strange dreams. And unfortunately, the baker's dream wasn't that good because as soon as he explained it to Joseph, Joseph knew, actually, your dream means that the Pharaoh has scheduled you to have the chop. Oh no, the baker thought. And you know, that came true as well. And the baker left and he was taken away. And the butler was a bit worried about his dream now. Well, he was explaining it to Joseph and he thought, please don't let, it's gonna be different to his, isn't it? It's gonna be different to his. And as he explained it out, the, the dream that the butler had had, Joseph asked God, what does it mean? Oh, good news, he said. Pharaoh is going to let you out of prison. He's going to forgive you and he's going to give you your job back and you're going to be set free. But when that happens, will you remember me to Pharaoh? Will you tell Pharaoh all about me and will you help me get out of prison? Of course, the butler said, I will do my best. You've really helped me. And as soon as I get out here, I will make it my number one priority to get you out of jail. And he goes out of jail and he gets released. He gets his job back. And all of a sudden, he forgets about Joseph. And poor Joseph is left in jail all by himself for a few more years. And just spending all the time just wondering when he was going to get out and how it, life was ever going to look any better. But God was with him the entire time. And then something funny happened. Because when the butler was working for the pharaoh, the pharaoh started to complain. <sighs> I slept really badly last night. I had this really strange dream. And he kept saying this over a few days and then all of a sudden, ding, 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 the butler remembered. Hang on a minute, he said. Pharaoh, there's this amazing guy who I met in prison. I had some weird dreams and he told me exactly what they meant. Maybe if we get him out of jail, he can tell you what your dreams mean. That's a brilliant idea, Pharaoh said. Send for him for me. Go and get Joseph. That's exciting, isn't it? And now it's over to our next letter. And so for this one, we're going over to our very own Joseph, who is going to reveal the next letter for us. Here we go. So, Joseph, shall we find out what letter it is? Yeah. Okay. So turn it round and show the boys and girls what letter is it for them. It's an R. Fab, thank you, Joseph. Sorry about that envelope. I might have done it up a little bit too hard. Perhaps it was a bit tricky to open. But you got there in the end. Well done. And so our next letter is an O. So we're going to add this to our letters here. An O in our story stands for out of jail because Pharaoh sent for Joseph immediately. And when Joseph came out, Pharaoh explained all his dreams. Joseph took a minute and asked God, what do they mean? And God showed him. And God showed him the meaning of the Pharaoh's dream. And as he, Joseph explained them to the Pharaoh, Pharaoh was so impressed. You see, his dreams meant that there was gonna be loads of crops and loads of food for seven years, and there was gonna be an amazing harvest all the time in Egypt. 
but then straight after that there's going to be seven years where nothing grew and they could run out of food completely and there's going to be a famine throughout the land and as Joseph explained that to Pharaoh, he thought, wow, we'd have never have known that. And if that had happened, then all of my people would have gone hungry and we wouldn't have had enough food to last us. And so immediately he put Joseph in charge of all of the land, of all of the gathering of the food and the storing, so that over those seven years they could make sure they had enough to last through the famine. And so Joseph went from prisoner to prime minister and all of a sudden he was in charge of like most of the land of Egypt which is pretty cool. And over the years Joseph did his job really well and God gave him favour and helped him with Pharaoh and everything that he did succeeded and he did really well in his job. Until one day he had some visitors from another land. Now you see they'd had the seven years of all the good crops and now it was time for the, t where the famine where they had to hand out all the food and rations to people to make sure that everyone had enough to eat and it was going to last for seven years. Now there were some people who lived a bit far away from Egypt who didn't know about the famine and hadn't really prepared for it and so were starting to get hungry bellies and didn't have any food left, they didn't have anything stored up and they were really hungry. Can you guess who they were? They were Joseph's brothers and his entire family. And they were so hungry, but they'd heard that in Egypt they had loads of food to spare. Now what they didn't know was that Joseph was in charge of the entire thing. They didn't know that he was even there anymore. They'd forgotten about him completely. And so they made the journey all the way to Egypt to see if they could get some food. And as they went there, Joseph met with them and they didn't recognize him. They didn't know who he was. Oh, Joseph thought, this is amazing. Because soon they were doing exactly what Joseph had seen in his dream when he was just a boy, that they were all bowing down before him and asking him for some food. And Joseph realized, you know, this was God's plan all along. Even though there were so many ups and downs and he spent years in jail and he was sold as a slave and he was all on his own, that this was God's plan. And that's why it came back around to that dream that he'd had of his brothers bowing down before him. And Joseph chose to forgive his brothers and to forgive them for selling him in the first place. And he even said to them, because you sold me as a slave, even though it was really hard and even though it was really awful, God has used my life in amazing ways. And so we're going over to one last letter to see what our final um, verse says. And this letter is a little bit closer to home for me because it's a person in my own house. So we're gonna go to Sean to open up our next letter. Did you get my letter? Um, the letter about the gas bill? No. Oh, the um, electricity? No. TV? No. Oh, is it the letter for the kids? Yeah, that's right. Oh, I think it might be here. Is it that one? Mm -hmm. one? Hey, boys and girls, nice to see you. Let me get the letter out for you. And it is an O. Uh, oh, uh, no, sorry. It's, um, I think it's a D. A D. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, Sean. This is our last letter. We've got a D to add on to our words here. And so this makes up the two words that make up our memory verse today. And the D in the story stands for dad. Because after all this time, after all the highs and lows and the troubles that Joseph went through, he was reunited with his dad again because his entire family was able to move to Egypt to be together with Joseph. And there's an amazing happy ending to like a really crazy story of all the ups and downs and the crazy things that happened in Joseph's life. But the, what stands out to me is throughout the story, these words in our memory verse, this is what comes up over and over again. No matter when Joseph is like on his own or feeling a bit scared or lonely or in prison or wherever he is, it always says, but God, and sometimes it says, but God helped Joseph or but God was with Joseph and God was with him all the time. And for us, 
during lockdown we can have some really brilliant days where I bet you've had some really fun times like spending time with your family, uh, maybe going out to the beach enjoying the sunny weather but I bet there's been times as well where it's felt a little bit scary or a little bit um, a bit boring, you don't get to see your friends and family, it's not really the same as what we're used to and sometimes that can make us feel a bit scared or a bit worried. But what we learn from Joseph's story is that no matter where we are, whether it's a great day or whether it's a hard day, God is always with us. There's always a but God is with us, but God loves us, but God forgives us. And no matter where we find ourselves, God has got a plan for our lives, just like he did for Joseph. And that he wants to help us and he wants to be with us in every step of the way. So shall we pray? Well, thank God for that. So we put our hands together, close our eyes, let's pray together. Dear God, thank you that you were with Joseph all the time, even when things were really brilliant and really hard. And thank you that you are the same with us, God, that you always are with us despite our circumstances, whether it's a really good day or a really hard day, God, that you love us and your Bible says that you are always with us. Help us to know that more this week. Amen. Amen. So that we can be encouraged that God is with you. He loves you. He's got an amazing plan for your life. And if you feel a bit worried, just like Joseph did, you can pray to him and ask him to help you because he always listens. I really hope you enjoyed that story today, boys and girls. Now, before we finish Sunday School for today, I've got a really special treat for you. Can you remember the cut bearer from the story, the one who worked for Pharaoh, and Joseph told him what his dream meant? Well, I've managed to get hold of him, and he has agreed to let us in for an all-access tour of Pharaoh's kitchen. And we're going to go and meet the baker, and we're going to find out all the things that Pharaoh likes to eat. And if you've got your baking stuff, they've even got a recipe for us to try. And so you can either go and get your stuff ready now or maybe save it for another time. But we're going to find out how to make one of Pharaoh's favourite things. So I'm going to hand over to them now and I'll see you in a bit. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Pharaoh's Kitchen. My name's Precious and I'm Pharaoh's new chief baker. Oh, hello there. Hi there. You must be the new baker. I am. My name's Matthew. I'm the chief cup bearer. I used to work with the old baker. You did? I did, yeah. And what happened to him? Um, it's a long story. Maybe another day. So what are you making today? I'm making Pharaoh's favourite, banana and chocolate muffins. Wow, sounds amazing. Do you want to learn how to make with me? Well, I'll teach you now. So the cup bearer is just gone to get some drinks ready, but in the meantime, we're gonna get going. So the first step is you have to wash your hands. Make sure they're nice and clean. Once you've done that, then you're gonna need two very ripe bananas like this, and you're gonna to need to peel them and then mash them. I've already got two that I prepared earlier, and you just wanna use a fork and mash it till it's very gooey and soft. Step three, you're gonna need 100 grams of butter and 175 grams of caster sugar and you're just going to mix them up in a bowl and then I'm going to use my electric mixer to mix it up so that it's nice and smooth. And that will do. This is what we've got so far. Step four. You're going to need two medium eggs and you're going to crack them one by one into the sugar and butter mixture. Try and make sure not to get any shells in. And then again, we're gonna mix that up until it's nice and smooth. Step five, you're gonna add three tablespoons of milk into the mixture. And step six, you're gonna add your two mashed bananas into the mixture. It's all gooey. Okay, this is what we've got so far. It's a bit lumpy, but don't worry, we're gonna mix that in. So we're almost there. We won't be needing our electric mix anymore. In fact, don't worry boys and girls if you haven't got one at home. You can mix it all by hand with a spatula. I only use it because it's really fast and Pharaoh doesn't like to be kept waiting. Step seven now. You're going to need 225 grams of self-raising flour 
and one teaspoon of baking powder. Sift that in nice and gently in batches and then we're going to mix it gently by hand. Don't worry if there are a few lumps here and there. And I'll add my baking powder in and now we fold it in nice and gently. This part can take a little while. You want to keep going until it's all mixed in and you can't see any flour anymore. Like so. We're on to step eight now. You're going to need 100 grams of chocolate, which can be in chips or chunks. I've got a little tip for you. If you can't find any chocolate chips in the shop, you can buy a bar of chocolate and then cut it up into chunks. That's what I like to do. I've got some here with me. So you're just going to add that in and then fold it in like you mixed before. And there we have it. The mixed batter. Step nine, we have to dish up all the batter into 12 different muffin cases like so. I like to use two spoons to help me do it. Don't worry if you make a bit of a mess, it's all part of the fun. Step 10. As you can see, the muffins are ready to go in the oven. I've dished the batter out into the 12 different cases. You want to put them in a preheated oven at 180 degrees for 25 minutes. And there you have it. Well, while the muffins are in the oven, I thought we could taste some drinks to go with it. Now, these are two of Farah's favourites. And when you've got something sweet, like banana muffins, you want a nice, soft, fruity squash to go with it. Now, you can get this for 99p in most supermarkets. It's a summer fruits variety. So give that a swirl and have a taste. Mmm. You'll see that's perfect Beautiful. to go with muffins. But if you want something a little sharper, a little crisper, maybe on a summer's day, then this one here is a lemon squash. You can also get this in most supermarkets. It's also 99p. Well, you don't need to swirl this one. Just give that a try. Oops. Mmm. Lovely. Nice. So, we both live in Pharaoh's palace and it's our job to help serve Pharaoh. And to serve just means to help out. So, I'm sure there's plenty of ways you can help out around your house with your family too. That can be by listening, by helping clean up, or by helping in the kitchen. Kind of like me. Yeah, and do you know what? God loves it when we serve others and when we help others because that's just what God is like. He loves to help us. And that's why Jesus came into the world. Jesus came into the world and he served us when he gave his life for us on the cross and three days later came back to life again so we could see what God is like, so we could know his love in our lives and so that we could be God's friend. And so God loves it when we serve because God serves us too. In the Bible, Jesus says he came to serve and to give his life for others. Isn't that amazing? So, why don't we all think of a few ways we can help out around our house this week too? Yeah, brilliant. And why don't I just pray and thank Jesus that he loves to help us and served us as well. Jesus, I thank you that you love every single boy and girl and grown-up who's watching today. And we thank you that you served us when you came into the world and you showed us how much God loves us. And we pray this week, would you help us to be helpful and to serve others and find ways to do it around our house as well. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ooh, I think the muffins might be ready now. Let's go check on them. So, there we have it. Banana and chocolate chip muffins. If you made them at home, I hope you enjoy. I can tell you, they look amazing. They smell amazing. Can I have one? Only if you don't tell Pharaoh. Shh. Bye. Thank you so much, guys. That was amazing. Those muffins look incredible. I'm really jealous. And so I hope, boys and girls, that you've had a chance to make them. And if you have, let me know how you get on. Um, that would be great. But that is it for today. So it's great to have you join us and we'll see you again soon. Bye.